Let us pray the prayer for illumination wholeheartedly and in unison. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Today's scripture reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Very good morning. It's to the delight of the scripture reader, there's only one verse. Huh? Yeah, it's uh, according to what we are trying to preach here. Eh? Rest in the Lord, lah. no need to read so much. Huh? <laughs> Let's pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we thank you for this morning that we can come in this manner because of what you have done on the cross. Lord, we thank you, Lord, from the bottom of our hearts that we can come in this manner, really, Lord, only by your blood. Feed us, Lord, so that we may be filled and not enable us, Lord, to live this life, a blessed life that you have intended for us. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, next slide. Rest in the Lord. Next slide. How are your upgrades going? Have you upgraded your perspective? Have you upgraded your trust in the Lord? Have you upgraded your time using it better uh, for the Lord? Have you upgraded your character by being more obedient and uh, submitting to God's truth? How's your upgrade going? Are you uh, trying to uh, upgrade, uh, but it's overwhelming. <laughs> so many things to upgrade. Uh? So many things. Upgrade, we should. Uh, we, can, we need to continue to upgrade because we cannot uh, stay where we are. Right? The Lord accepts us for who we are, but He will not leave us as who, where we are. So He will move us. So now, with all these upgrades, some of us may be overwhelmed, you know, uh, thinking about it, trying to do it. Now, upgrades are, uh, in the physical sense, also can cost money. Yeah? <laughs> physical sense, uh, you want to upgrade things, you need to have resources, correct? Now, what about spiritual upgrades? Do you need resources? Yes, yes, <laughs> of course, yes. You need to draw from a spiritual source. And that's what we are going to talk about. Okay, next slide. Now, uh, what do you do to be physically healthy? Now, it's, uh, yeah, we all know this, right? We have many doctors here. So, you want to try? There are three things, right? What, what do we do? Eh? Oh, it's out there already. Aya. Okay, la, we eat well. Uh, we exercise. And one more component is that we need to rest well. Uh, this is what we're going to talk about. Now, if physically is like that, is spiritually any different? No, it's the same. It's the same. Eh? We eat well, we rest well, we exercise well. Next slide. Thank you. Yeah, so when we eat well, how does it look like spiritually? We need to eat of the Lord. Lah. Why is commanded of us eh, in John 6? Communion eh, is a symbol of it, right? We eat of the Lord, right? We eat, this is my body broken for you, this is my blood, right? What, is it, what does it mean? It symbolizes that we need to partake of the truth, the word. Right? The word is spiritual, the word gives life. That is why our pastor keeps harping on it, right? 
Every sermon, it says, you've got to do your devotion. Are you hearing it? <laughs> you've got to read. But then eating physically, we don't have to be prodded to eat, right? We eat naturally. But how come spiritually we don't eat naturally? Something for us to ponder on, right? We should be delighted to eat spiritually. How come you're not hungry for spiritual food? Or maybe you do not recognize that hunger. Right? What are the symptoms of spiritual hunger? Uh, maybe when you become irritable, <laughs> somewhat like uh, when you are physically hungry, eh? or hangry they call it. <laughs> when you are hungry, you are angry. Some of us are like that. Okay? Uh, maybe it's the same for spiritual hunger. So, think about that. Eh? We should be eating spiritually, naturally as well. right? We should be hungering for God's Word. Now, what about exercising? Well, in the faith of the Lord. Now, this is where your upgrades are. <laughs> These are all where... All the upgrades are, right? You've got to exercise your faith. When you hear the truth, read, then you've got to submit to it. You've got to do it, right? Step out in faith. Now, while you're doing this, one crucial point, like any exercise in the physical world, spiritual world is the same. You need to rest. Uh, you, you need to rest. It doesn't mean that now, uh, you know, we rest and then we don't do anything. No. To, you rest in the Lord, you, 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 you draw from the Lord so that you can do your upgrades well. That's what, trying, what, that's what we are trying to say. Okay? So, uh, I want to propose lah, huh, three things huh, for our spiritual health uh, to be improved. We need to also upgrade our rest. Lah. Doesn't mean that we have to... Uh, it doesn't mean now we, we just go and uh, book a five-star hotel and just, just <laughs> sleep through. Huh? No, not only that. Now, what do we do to rest well in the Lord? Next slide. First of all, uh, we need to understand what causes restlessness. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. Right? It is not an exhaustive list, but somewhat can cover 70-80% like, of the time uh, that gets us, uh, uh, puts us in the place of no rest or restlessness. Right? Number one is sin. Basically, sin uh, gets into a position of guilt, um, unworthiness, uh, shame. And then uh, later on, we'll look at scripture on what it does, right? How it is described when you sin uh, in the Bible. Yeah? What about insecurities? Some of us have insecurities. Uh, can we get through uh, this financial sis, uh, uh, situation? Can we get through this health situation? And that leads us into, uh, it may contribute to chaos and also your battles later on, right? Uh, some of us are overworked. Uh, because uh, we cannot say no, maybe, or, you know, literally just being uh, given jobs after jobs by the bosses and you just cannot take it anymore. Overworked. Uh, you sleep, but there's no peace. You can, your body is rested, but inside is there's turmoil. Is that very familiar? Or is this just me? <laughs> Right? What about chaos? Um, things that you can't control. It's just happening to you one after another. I'm, the, I'm not talking about big chaotic war and stuff like that. I, I'm just talking about small, small things. You know, uh, maybe your tire got punctured the other day and uh, you know, you, somebody at work uh, not very happy with you. Or, this is all little things that, that is happening, but it's happening at the same time. And then you're just overthinking it. And there's no rest. No rest. And then battles, right? We, we battle. Every day we battle. We battle relationships. We battle with our bosses. We battle with our 
uh, spouses. <laughs> we battle with so many things around us. Sometimes we battle with our car, trying to get it started. Okay? Something like that. We battle. And then it contributes. Now when it contributes that way, what do we do? What do we do? So I would like to propose, uh, uh, we look at these three things. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Three things. Uh, again, this is not an exhaustive list, not an exhaustive list. Uh, we, one can go and take a silent retreat uh, to deal with it as well. But uh, these three things, if we do it consistently on a daily basis, uh, we should be able to come to rest in peacefully inside that we will feel the peace of God guarding our hearts, enabling us to do what we need to do as a Christian. Okay? So, first of all, relationship. Uh, number one, relationship. Uh, and then we look at priorities and dependencies. Now, we've got to get this right with the Lord. These three things. Uh, again, not an exhaustive list, but it, uh, it covers uh, most of the things. Huh? Relationship, we got it right. Get our priorities right. Get our dependency right. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> First of all, relationship. Uh, I put there repent and confess. Uh, this is for two categories of, uh, of us. First of all, if you are still thinking of receiving Christ, uh, then the word for you is repent. Now, now, there's a lot of sin that cannot be washed away on your own. You cannot do enough good works to balance off those things that you have done in the past that is considered sin. Right? The only way is to repent. To repent means, while well, last time you are on this way, going down together with the world in a sinful manner, now, repent is to turn from it. To turn from it. Repent once. You repent once. Once you repent and say, I acknowledge God. I acknowledge Jesus Christ. I have faith in you. The Bible says, you can be saved. You will be saved. In, in that manner. Because we are saved by grace through faith. Huh? Through faith. But then the faith enables us, together with the Holy Spirit, to be living a new life because we have the new spirit in us. Now, even then, while we are walking as a Christian, sometimes we stumble. We have to admit that. Now, that is when we have to confess our sins. Right? Confess our sins is akin to what Jesus says. He says, you know, while you walk, you come back, I, uh, I will wash your feet. He told Peter, he says that, you know, those who have taken a bath, you're already clean, right? But then, uh, as you walk on earth, you may pick up sins and all that. You, can, you need to come back so that I may wash your feet. That is what it means, spiritually. Okay? Wash. So confess. And then if you want it to be more direct, you go to 1 John 1, 1.9. If, if we confess of our sins, He is just and all right, faithful and just, and then He will cleanse your sin and all your unrighteousness. Correct? That's very direct. So, uh, yeah, we will repent and then you confess. Now, if you... <coughs> If you think that sin doesn't affect our rest in the Lord, our peace in the Lord, uh, look at this uh, particular verse in uh, Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1, it says, uh, next slide please, thank you. Right, Isaiah chapter 1 says, now Isaiah chapter 1 talks about uh, Israel as a nation, Isaiah started off his prophecy by saying this, Hello, Israel, turn from your sin. Come back. Why should the Lord continue to punish you? Right? Why, should, why should the Lord 
continue to just scold you and, and hit you some more. Right? You, you know in your sin, you are already like, like a person with heart injured, your whole heart is afflicted, you, you, are, you, are like a, you are like a person with wounds and welts and open sores. Uh, that is the physical analogy right? for those who are in sin, who live in sin. We need to repent. You, you can't be effective when you are in sin. God, through Isaiah, is asking the Israelites to return to Him, to do what is right, to return to Him, and to come to Him for healing. Don't continue to come to church. Now, I'm just paraphrasing Isaiah 1. Huh? Isaiah 1 says, uh, oh, you, you bring all the sacrifice, you, you do all those things and all that. I don't need it. <laughs> What I need from you is that do not sin, come back, return to me and I'll return to you. Look, you are injured. No point for me to continue to discipline you, to, hear, you know, to scold you, to judge you, to bring the uh, nations from the north and to attack you. So on and so forth. How do we apply this today for us? Now, you want to do your upgrades, you want to, you want to, you want to uh, uh, please the Lord, but sometimes in it, if you don't deal with these sins, if you don't deal with all these things inside, you can't move on. And even when you want to do good, these things hold you back. So you need to get it cleansed off, cleansed off or heal for a moment before you start doing anything. Okay? So that's number one. Next, next move. Let, let's move. He huh? says, this is... Uh, uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So when you come, uh, Isaiah once uh, gives us the gospel. He says, let's, though your sins are like scarlet, huh? they shall be as white as snow. That's the promise to Israel. That's the promise to us today as well. Though you are in your sin, He can wash you. Repent if you have not yet repented. And then confess so that you can be cleansed on your walk with Jesus Christ. Repent and confess. Now, when we don't confess, next slide please. Uh, something is not right inside. Right? Uh, the Bible in Psalm says, uh, then uh, it, it, my bones, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's rotting away. You know, until uh, I, I acknowledge my sin to you uh, and I did not cover up my iniquity uh, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. So something lifted up for the psalmist when he confessed his sins. If not, it affects even his bones. <laughs> if you read the, uh, this particular psalm uh, further up, eh, it talks about sin affecting him so deeply. So sin can affect us. We have to deal with it. We've got to get it right with the Lord. Repent and confess. Next. Number two. Right, then we need to get this right with God. Priorities. Now, uh, this uh, particular narrative or story or account, we all know very well. Huh? Martha and Mary. Martha and Mary. Right, our, pr our priority. Priority in what? Priority in listening to God first before trying to do anything else. Before we are distracted by our own priorities. Okay, um, recently, you know, in internet, uh, sometimes uh, you have good things inside there, like, not all bad. Uh. So, <laughs> one thing, uh, one phrase I learned from the internet is this, it says, um, we are not afraid of failures. We may not be afraid of failures, uh, but in success, 
that don't matter. Let me say that again. Eh? We may not be afraid of failures, but in success, that may not matter. You know what it means? Yeah? Yeah. So sometimes we, we, we think that what we do will give us success. But is this success going to matter at the end? Where is our priority? There is upgrading your time, upgrading your perspective, upgrading your ideas, they're almost the same. But where is it? Where is it triggered? Listening to the Lord. You, that's where it's triggered. You need to sit down. Now, this is very near to your eat and drinking well. Huh? Eat and drinking well. But more than that, it's your priority. You need to eat and drink well on a timely basis, listening to the Lord. So, uh, next slide. When, <clears throat> when we don't listen well, when we don't prioritize well, uh, the sample or the example of how we may react may be like this, like Martha. He says, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha is telling the Lord to do something for her. Wow. Sometimes we can get into that mode, you know, when we prioritize our things and then we don't listen to the Lord for that priority, for that day, for that hour, for that season. Right? So we prioritize our things, our projects, and then we ask the Lord, Lord, help me to do it. Today, we, don't, we may not do it in this manner. Lah. But in our prayers, is that, Lord, help me. Lah. Uh, my project, lah. bless me. Lah. Bless my, my thing. Bless my work. This is mine. You see that? It can go that way. Instead, if you were to prioritize listening, sitting and listening to the Lord, it may come true with a different priority. And if it does come true with a different priority, will you be able to change your course of action? Something for us to think about. Right? Priorities. Next slide. <clears throat> a Lord says, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things. Right? No peace. Huh? No peace inside. Uh, that's how uh, one of the symptoms uh, when you have no peace, uh, these things may come out this manner. Uh, so this is a way of recognizing uh, that internally you may have no peace. Uh, but few things are needed. A uh, few things are needed. Indeed, there's only one, the Lord says, only one. And Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Her worship, her, her priorities, Mary put the Lord as number one. She sit there, she sat there, and listened to the Lord. I'm glad now you're here. <laughs> you're sitting here and you're listening to the truth of the Lord. Okay? Yeah, and from here, basically, you prioritize your life. That is good. Priorities, we need to prioritize. And then when you prioritize with the Lord, when you trust, when you upgrade your trust with the Lord, next slide, uh, the result is He will make your path straight. You will be effective. You will be productive. You, if you try to go and do your own thing, you may end up yeah, achieving you may achieve something. <laughs> but again, it may not matter. It may not matter. Trust in the Lord with your whole heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him. And He will make your path straight. In your chaos, in your battles, in your anxiety. What do you do? Go to Him. Listen to Him. 
have that peace in your heart. Number three, rest well in the Lord. Get your dependencies right. Who are we depending on in our troubles, in our chaos, in our battles? Who are we depending on? Now, this is today's verse. Lah. It says, Come to me, all you who are heavily burdened and weary, and I will give you rest. And then the following verses are these. It says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. This is the key. You've got to come to the Lord. When you are in battle, when you, are, when you have no answers, trust in the Lord. Come to Him. Come to His words. Come to His people. Come to church. Go to care groups. It's not one day you know, on your Sabbath. I'm not talking about Sabbath or rest day. Yeah? But it is rest in the Lord. It's not one day anymore. It is every day. The seventh day has gone on from the seventh day of creation. It's to be rested in the law. And you will find rest for your souls. Take my yoke. What does it mean to be yoked with the Lord? You know of this uh, uh, the, uh, the definition right, of being yoked. It's a picture of two animals yoked together with a piece of wood, right? Uh, when, you're, when you're yoked together, what happens? What happens? Next slide. When you're yoked together, uh, depending on who or what you're yoked with, but when you are yoked, you will travel in the same direction. These are the key things, right? You will travel the same direction. You will move. If you try to move in a different direction when you're yoked, oh, there will be a big struggle. Correct? So you will have to move together. If you are yoked together with the priorities of money, you are going to be yoked together. Right? If you are going to be yoked together with the priorities of pleasure, you are going to be moving in that direction. You can't move in any other direction because you are yoked together. So what are you yoked with? You are yoked with Christ. Moving in step. The next thing is moving in step. Not only direction, in step. If you are moving not in step, you are also going to be in trouble. <laughs> right? But when you move and yoke with Jesus, Jesus promised that, says, my yoke is light. My yoke is easy. Right? He promises us that. And I personally have experienced that. I'm sure many of you have experienced this. This is not new uh, to some of us huh, who have been traveling together with Jesus. Sure, there are chaos. Sure, there are battles. But yet, we can depend on Christ, depend on, on His Word, depend on His Holy Spirit to give us this peace while we travel this trouble roads. Right? We have the peace. The peace. So, what are the things that you need to do for your yoke to be easy? Uh, next slide. He says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Do you trust that? Or not? Do you trust those words of Jesus? Have you experienced it? If you have not, uh, if this is the first time you are seeing it, do you trust it? If, uh, if this is not the first time, have you experienced the lightness? Yes, I have. When I pray, you know, when things just go haywire, like last week. <laughs> last week was haywire for me. I had so many things to do and I fell sick. <laughs> I had to preach in the Hokkien service last Sunday. Uh, I was sick. Uh, being sick is no joke. You, you try to do things, you can't. But you have to do it anyways. So I have to pray. I have to draw strength from the Lord. What happens spiritually also happens physically. Eh? It affects uh, 
your physical well-being. It's the same way what happens physically will can affect what is inside as well, your mood and stuff like that, right? So uh, we take it from our Creator, lah. He knows us best. Lah. This is His manual. He gives us the instruction. Let us learn from Him. Come to God. Come to God. Now, if you want to upgrade and be effective, if you want to do all His works and be effective, you need to go to the Lord. You can't do this on your own. Why? Because the Bible says so. Next slide. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders will labor in vain. You, you can labor all you want. But if the Lord is not there, uh, in step with Him, using His instruction, having His peace, you can do His work, eh? but there's no peace. Eh? And sometimes it taints that work. You know, have you spoken to, I don't know, maybe leaders, pastors, whoever in the past, or even members, you, you know that you know, 90% or 95% of the person is, is well, he's doing good, doing well, want to do the, the Lord's work and all that. But then uh, you can detect that 5%. Uh, <laughs> it's not right with this person. Maybe he's battling things, like any of us, correct or not? Like any of us. Uh, and if that doesn't affect the ministry or the relationship, it's fine. But uh, more often than none, it does affect. Especially when you're holding a higher influential post. Uh, just imagine if your pastor is having that 10% anger and frustration in him. And then he try to minister. It will come through, you know. Uh, imagine your boss, uh, who is a Christian maybe, and he's trying to influence you. And then he's always angry or frustrated or, you know, there's something there always. You know what I'm trying to say, right? Yeah. So, uh, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Confess. Get it cleansed. Have that peace that surpass human understanding. Guard our hearts so that the Lord's name will be praised. The Lord's name will be praised. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. So I'll leave you with these three things. Uh, I'll leave you with visuals. Lah. So that if you can't remember the words, I leave you with the last slide. The last slide. Huh? So repent and confess. That posture. Huh? That posture. Repent and confess. Repent and confess. Sit and listen. Sit and listen. Sit and listen. Connect. Connect and depend. Because it depends on what you connect to. Where you're connected to anything. You're depending on anything. The results will be that. Okay, so if you connect with the Lord, depend on the Lord, and the Lord gives you that assurance that it's going to be light and easy, that is going to be the results. Now, if you prioritize well, you listen well, and you don't go and get distracted and do your own things and all that, and the result will be, you'll be more productive. Your path will be straight <laughs> instead of going in circles for 40 years. <laughs> Repent and confess and you will have that peace. That product of confession is peace. You are not so insecure anymore. You don't have to fight. You don't have to take vengeance on yourself. Trust in the Lord. Have that peace so that you can minister well. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, that there is rest in you. Indeed, this rest is beyond physical. It is a rest for our weary souls. It is also a rest from your wrath. Peace that surpass human understanding. Indeed, you will guard our hearts so that we may not always be triggered by our own insecurities, by our own priorities, 
and struggle with our own burden that is so heavy. Sometimes it can feel so heavy. Lord, whatever that we are struggling with right now, Lord, may we come to you yet again, trusting in your words, that when we, can, when we come to you with our heavy burden and our worries, you can give us peace. So Lord, we come to you today. Lord, let there be a supernatural peace when we walk out from, from this sanctuary, Lord, from this service, to guard our hearts so that we may experience it once and hunger for it every day from here. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.